I was asked to come and have a brief conversation and presentation with yourselves around cultural transformation. I was asked to do that because I work at Windsor Regional Hospital, and I'm going to give you a little bit of history about Windsor Regional Hospital so you can understand the transformation that we made. I think that, unfortunately, every transformation starts in a place where none of us would like to find ourselves. And that's certainly where we were as an organization. So the first part of the presentation, if you'll forgive me, is a little bit of true confessions. Um, they're honest true confessions, but they were very, very painful. What happened at Windsor Regional Hospital in 2008 is we had a total change in our leadership team. We had a new CEO, there were five new vice presidents, all freshly appointed, um, and we looked around us. And we looked around us and we found some things that we didn't like very much. Um, a couple of examples of that would be, we found that only 40% of our staff were washing their hands before and after patient contact. We also found that that resulted in almost 900 hospital-acquired infections a year. We also found that our HSMR score was the worst in the country. HSMR is an indicator that tells you how many deaths you have in your hospital as compared to expected deaths. The average expected death rate would be around 100. We rang the bell, so to speak, at 149, the very worst in the country of Canada. We also had some very significant morale problems. Only 55% of our staff would recommend Windsor Regional Hospital as a place of employment for their friends or loved ones. Our patient satisfaction scores at first glance looked kind of good, 94%, but that in fact is the provincial average. Certainly nothing to brag about. We were average at best. And then to boot, uh, we had a $20 million deficit. So basically, that's my quick way of saying we have a lot of troubles. Um, we were all new, and I need to say we weren't all new to the organization, and we were very surprised at the difficulties that we had signed on for. And so you'd have to ask yourself, now that we've all signed on, and that's what we're looking like, what are we going to do with that? Um, you can imagine for the first couple of months there were a few thoughts that didn't have a lot to do with bravery and courage, um, but had a little bit more to do with fleeing, but we thought that probably wasn't in our best interest. And I can tell you that our transformation became, became, really began as a result of great courage. It takes an inordinate amount of courage to stand up there and to admit how bad you really are and to admit that to yourselves, to your staff, and to your community is one of the more challenging things that I think a leader would ever need to do. But the bottom line is, if you don't have the courage, you don't make the change, and probably everybody knows how bad you are anyway. We were probably the last to know. I doubt that there were that many surprises in the community. So what we did was we had the courage to step forward, we had a campaign almost immediately. It was called a non-denial campaign. So you couldn't say that my data is really bad and it's not reflective of my work. No, actually it is. The data is really bad. The indicators are really bad. We own it. It's ours and move forward. Don't ask anybody to search the data again to, to find out why you might not be as bad as it looks like you are. So that was basically challenge number one. What we did was we got our board of directors, who you can imagine weren't that pleased. Um, we got our board of directors, all of our physicians who are not on staff at Winter Regional Hospital. Um, we invited all of our frontline staff, all of our leadership team, our public, um, and previous patients to attend a strategic planning session. I don't know about the rest of you, but until this strategic planning session, they weren't things that I was really excited about. They tended to be a little bit boring um, and kind of a rubber stamp activity. This one was amazing. Um, it was held in the auditorium, which holds 500 people, and nobody got to sit. It was all about standing up, having a conversation, um, tweaking, and having uh, great deals of 
um, interactive conversations about what is it we're going to do at Windsor Regional Hospital that's going to make us different. We had over 400 people attend our strategic planning sessions, which is really quite impressive because I need to tell you they were held on a weekend. Anybody know how special weekends are and how hard it is to get people to attend? They were a weekend held and we had great attendance. One of the most amazing things that came out of our strategic planning session, I believe, was our vision statement. Outstanding care, no exceptions. That was really critical because it means outstanding care all of the time, not with weekends off, um, holidays, those kinds of things. Our patients love our vision because it guarantees to them that we're working really hard to make certain that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you're gonna get exactly what you need, how you need it in the safest way possible. It's a great mission or vision statement because it holds our staff accountable as well. We don't always hit that, as I'm sure you can imagine. The important thing is our staff know when we did not provide outstanding care with no exceptions. When we have the exception, it's okay. It's not good, but it's okay. The important thing is to know what is it went wrong and what are we going to do differently next time so we don't have that same negative experience with that patient. And our uh, vision statement has carried us a very long way. I would hazard a guess um, that you could canvas our 3,000 employees, ask them our vision statement, and there would be very few that do not know what it is. We live and breathe it in our hallways. As part of our strategic plan, um, we have a number of uh, directions, and not surprisingly in healthcare, one of them is to excel at patient safety and quality. In order to do that, however, in, in terms of our transformation, it was really great that we had flip charts and we decided that that's one of the things that we needed to do, but we needed to find a way to bring our um, directions to life. And essentially what that means is how are you gonna engage your frontline staff so that they know, acknowledge, and own everything that they do every day? What is their accountability to make certain that in fact we are doing the very best that we can do for each patient each time. It sounds really easy, it's not easy, and the only way we could get there was really to provide people with data, with results, with indicators, every day, every week, on how are you doing, and to know if you're not doing well, it's okay, we'll find a way to fix it together. We were three years into our transformation. We worked very hard, as I'm sure you can imagine, we were very excited, we were very honored to be invited to the Mayo Clinic to present three of our best practice awards. Not a lot of people get invited to the Mayo Clinic, in case you don't know. That was really big, and it was really big because our frontline staff went. It was our staff that went to talk about the work that they'd done. One of our best practice indicators was reducing the number of patient falls. We reduced the number of patient falls in our organization in three years to the lowest number, the lowest fall rate in the country of Canada, and we sustained it over a two year period of time. That comes a long way from where we were in 2008. It's really important, and I'm sure you, you, you know when you understand, measure everything that you do, get your results out there so everybody knows what their results are and how they can make it better. Accountability, huge, and transparency. It's rather the hardest thing to do. One of the things that we found was our results weren't very good. We really didn't like them, and it would have been kind of easy to run and hide from them, because quite frankly, as you saw, uh, Scalita look, they were really quite bad. So what we did at our strategic planning sessions is we made sure we couldn't do that. We identified 14 core corporate indicators. Every one of them attached themselves to patient safety and patient quality. And that's all we did in our organization. I don't know about most of you, but many had different projects, different initiatives, great ideas on things they should do. The instructions across the organization were very clear. Whatever it is you were working on, stop working on it. It's not important, it doesn't matter. We're not looking at that right now. All we're doing is focusing on 14 things. Actually, that was a relief, because we previously had been focusing on more things than you could count, which probably got us to where
rooms were. So everybody stopped, you put your file folders away, your ideas away, 14 things is all our organization obsessed about. And I do mean obsessed. That's all you were allowed to talk about. What happens with these 14 core indicators, um, red's bad there in case you're looking. Red means you really didn't hit your target. You've got work to do. Green means you're great. Uh, you've hit your target. And the arrows trending up mean you're trending in the right direction. And down means you're not trending in the right direction. At face value, that looks really simple, but it really isn't. That's a report that goes out every month, but underneath that report, every area gets a report every week for their specific area that shows them how they contributed to the monthly results. Every month, one needs to step forward, and I'll tell you how in a minute, to explain their results. To explain if you're doing really well, that's great. If you're not doing well, then you need to stand up at the microphone, much like I'm doing here today, and explain what it is you're gonna do differently next month. It's okay not to do well, it's not okay not to have a plan to make it better, and it's really not okay to be really bad for four or five months in a row. It's total accountability. Speaking of total accountability, um, our president and CEO's name is David Mushe. That's how I got invited to be here today, by the way. Um, David was spotted on the fifth estate. Um, David Mushe, as our president and CEO, is probably one of the bravest, most courageous men I have ever had the privilege of meeting and working with in my life. Um, I've been around healthcare for a while. I've had seven um, CEOs, and David is the only one, bar none, that will actually stand up and do exactly the right thing, no matter how hard, no matter how painful. This is an example of that. Every patient that's admitted to our hospital or passes through as an outpatient is provided with a letter. It's not stuck in an envelope. It's not folded in three. It's not buried in a package. Everybody gets a letter. It's welcome to Windsor Regional Hospital. Here's David. Here's his picture. And really interesting and curiously, at the bottom of that letter, you will see David Mouche's cell phone number and his home phone number. And anybody that comes into our organization that has a problem, a concern, a compliment, and anything is welcome and cordially invited to call David at his home to have a conversation with him. Now I can tell you, when that letter first came out, the conversation around the organization was he's lost his mind. Like the man is clearly crazy. Uh, David's 42, by the way, so the thinking was he just doesn't get it yet. Yeah, well, you know what, he gets it just fine. And I can tell you, in spite of everybody's advice not to do that, um, the letters continue to go up. It's been five years. David gets approximately four phone calls a year, just to be clear, his phone's not at home. His phone is not ringing off the hook. But I can tell you, each and every time he gets one of those phone calls, it's really a traumatic phone call. It's a patient that's in a situation and an environment where they've hit the wall and they've got nowhere to go and they've got nowhere to turn. And I can tell you that organizationally how proud we are of the fact that we have a CEO that stepped up there and he will be. And I can tell you because I get the next phone call, he's on the phone finding out what it is we're gonna do to address that patient's needs. It's absolutely um, important that we as leaders do that. We put ourselves out there. We make sure that the buck stops with us because it really does. At the end of the day, as senior leaders, it, it starts and stops where we are. So this is another picture of David. I can show these pictures, he wouldn't, because if he was here, he'd be blushing at this point in time. But once again, it talks about cultural transformation. It talks about how you get from how bad we were to where we are now. Not perfect, but pretty darn good. If you want something different, you gotta be there to support your staff. And the best way to be there is to actually be there. And so David does undercover boss, usually four times a year. He puts on his scrubs, his running shoes, and he spends a day in a particular area. Um, staff get to ask and invite David to come to an area. You can imagine the invitation list is long. At first, when he started to do undercover boss, thought everybody thought, well, that's a great thing. I get to whisper in his ear and get what I want. No, that's pretty much not it. But he does go to the area and, and interact with staff. Critical. The other 
thing that's come out of that is every vice president to our organization every Tuesday does a round. We spend one half hour in the patient care area interacting with staff to see what's going on, what they need, what we can do to help. Once a month, every vice president puts on their scrubs and their running shoes, and we spend three hours in the clinical area working side by side with the staff so we can see exactly what it is we're asking them to do. I don't know about the rest of you, but sometimes we write policies and procedures they read so well. And it tells everybody what to do. And, and boy, it sounds good. Um, we don't implement policies and procedures in clinical areas anymore until we've gone up in our scrubs and our running shoes and we've actually walked through that policy and procedure to see if it works. It's kind of embarrassing to say most often it doesn't. So we have to go back to the drawing board and we make changes. Once again, cultural change, lead by example, and the only way to do that is to actually be there. Engaging frontline staff, um, our best ideas are probably at best, best ideas. We don't work directly with the staff, nothing's happening, nothing's changing. Um, our, um, one of the things that we do, and it was a best practice with the Mayo Clinic, is we have every Monday morning, once again, indicator, focus, driven, every Monday morning, every vice president, every director at Windsor Regional Hospital comes into a room and we spend 15 minutes, we have seven indicators. Your job is to stand up and say, how did I do with my indicator last week? How many patients did we harm? Is eventually what we're talking about? How many patients fell and got injured? How many medication errors did we make? How many hospital acquired infections? We're going back to our core indicators. If the answer is not zero, and it commonly isn't, then you stand up as the responsible director and you explain to the group what you're gonna do differently this week so that it will be zero next week. 15 minutes, it's not a meeting, we don't do meetings anymore. We go in, we give the facts, we give the data, we give the action plan not to be confused with the excuse and we do something different the next week. Our frontline staff have embraced that. They now meet with every patient in our organization every day. The manager goes from patient to patient on her unit and she spends five minutes with every patient prescribed questions. How did we do? What can we do differently? Are you okay? Is there something uh, different that we can do to help you out? Part of cultural transformation, part of change. If you want something different to happen with your patients, you have to be there to find out what's going well and what's not. Staff led safety huddles at the beginning of every shift. All of our staff get together every unit, every day, to say what's different on our unit. What is it is going on in our unit right now that presents a risk to our patients? Common examples would be we've admitted a patient, we've got a name that sounds like somebody else on the internet. You really don't want to be in that situation without knowing it because you get into medica medication errors. If we've just admitted a patient that's a frequent follower at home, all the staff need to know that at the safety huddle so we can make certain that in fact that patient's not falling again. Once again, same thing, know your business, know your core, uh, make it a priority. Vibrant workplace, uh, we weren't one. Remember 55% of our uh, staff wouldn't even recommend that their friends work with us. It wasn't a good place to start. We did a lot of work. One of our um, really uh, popular innovations was we have a genius lab. So electronically staff submit their ideas to make things better. We get approximately 400 submissions every year. They've gone up slightly. We've implemented about one third of them. And every one that we implement, the staff get $150. It doesn't break the bank. I know it's not a lot of money, but we post it. Everybody in the organization knows who submitted a Genius Lab idea and who's got implemented, and it creates an energy um, all of its own. Healthy lifestyles you'd expect in healthcare, we do a lot with our staff to make certain that, that they're in shape, that they are taking good care of themselves. So we've got spa days, we've got a gym, small membership, smoking cessation programs, yoga, anything that we can do to make certain that our staff know we will do anything that we can to take care of them. Most of these activities are during working hours, um, so it rather makes a statement. Recognition program, this is a big one. Really one of the things that worked so well for us is to have our staff recognized for their good work. And when you recognize people for their good work, they want to do good work again the next day and the day after that. 
The, the program is fabulous. It's based upon patients and peers writing a really quick note to say what it is so-and-so did that went above and beyond the call of duty that made their experience um, absolutely fabulous. After you've had three above and beyond recognitions, you qualify to be what we call one of our big stars. This started out small, it got kind of big, and then some people got a little bit embarrassed, but they got over it. What happens is after you get three above and beyond, you get your picture taken, and you get put on a banner. The banner's six feet big, six feet tall, four feet wide, and we post them all over the organization. Um, the shy people don't like it so much, uh, but they do get over it. What happens, though, is we wanted to become the employer of choice. So what we did with all of those banners is we translated them and transformed them into billboards across the city. So you can drive anywhere in the city of Windsor and what you will find is Windsor Regional Hospital billboards. And they are showcasing our above and beyond recipients, our staff that have done amazing work. We're a quarter city and so we spend a lot of time sitting at the tunnel waiting to get in and out. There's electronic billboards there, well guess who's on them? Windsor Regional staff being acknowledged and recognized every day. The other part to that was we were trying to capture the nurses that were going across the border to work. We're thinking, if you're sitting in line, you might want to ask two questions. A, why am I sitting in line to get to Detroit to work and maybe that's a really good place to be as well. A very, very effective campaign. Distinguishing ourselves through superior in, in, uh, performance. Like everyone else, I think we've done a lot of lean work. Step out there, do something different. When we did lean, no one else was doing it in healthcare. It made a big difference. Got patients through the emergency department well, quickly, safely. Celebrate. If you don't celebrate, there's really not much point in doing your work. We celebrate a lot, like an awful lot. Yeah, I don't want to tell you celebration stories, but we're very good at celebrating. One of the things that we make sure of is when we're celebrating, it's the frontline staff who did the work who are front and center. When we win an award, we win a lot these days. The senior leadership team doesn't go to get the award, the frontline staff go to get the award. I wouldn't want to know the cost of our transportation, our buses, our to, to various uh, cities in the province, uh, to Florida, and to the Mayo Clinic, but it's worth every penny of it because the folks that did the work are the ones standing there getting the recognition. And success breeds success. A lot of innovations uh, going on at the hospital, almost all of them driven by frontline staff. If you want something different, have the staff design what it is, and it will in spades pay dividends. Fear of failure, uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but it's really easy to get caught up in doing the same thing everybody else does, because if you do something different, it might not work so well, and then you're gonna look a little bit goofy. Um, where we look goofy a lot. Um, a lot of the things that we try work, some of them don't. One of our bigger successes, first hospital in the country to do room service for patients. It's called at your request. You come into Windsor Regional Hospital, you go to your room, you've got a telephone, you've got a menu, um, and you pick up the phone and you order. From six o'clock in the morning until midnight, you can order all day long, unless of course you're diabetic and then you have some rules around that. But you can pick up the phone, you order what you want, you eat what you want, our wastage decreased by 50% and the health improved because people are eating what they want to eat when they want to eat it. Absolutely fabulous program, not common to healthcare, high propensity for failure, but boy, when you hit something out of the park, kind of good, so that was one of our out of the park initiatives. Lots of awards. I tell you, we've got lots of awards, not to brag, I tell you, we've got lots of awards because the way we got that was by engaging our frontline staff because guess who does the work? Our staff have rolled up their sleeves, they're focused on our 14 core indicators and they will do almost anything to make certain that our patients are cared for, outstanding care, no exceptions, and boy, when we fail, everybody knows and everybody stands up and takes accountability for it. But when we don't, when we succeed, we're good at that too. So, our journey, five years later, and please understand we are not done. We are so not done. Um, it's kind of scary some days, 
but we've made a lot of progress. So we used to wash our hands 40% of the time. We now wash it 96% of the time, so don't be afraid to come to see us. I can almost guarantee you, you're not gonna get a hospital acquired infection. We used to have 17 a week, we're down to three. Our HSMR, for those of you who are worried about our mortality ratio, the worst in Canada at 149, we're at about 92 right now. Done a lot of work with our physicians, made an incredible amount of progress there. Remember, 50% of the people wouldn't recommend anybody would come to work with us. Look where we are now, 88%. I can tell you when I started to do this job, um, we had 47 vacant RN positions. We couldn't fill schedules. We literally were paying people to double back to, to do their shift. Now, employer of choice um, in the community, we have no vacancies and we've got a wait list of people saying, I'd really like to sign on, can you call me when you've got your next vacancy? It's all about the staff. Everything that you do, everything that you concentrate on, if you go to your staff, they know the answer, they probably knew the question before you did, and they have the solution. And that's how you change your culture. Courage, leadership courage to admit where you're not good and going to the frontline staff so that they can help you to get as good as you need.